Welcome to another Spotlight video where we walk you through a Spotlight figure from your textbook. This video walks you through the Pulmonary Ventilation Spotlight found in Chapter 15. After watching this video, you should be able to describe pulmonary ventilation or breathing, the process of moving air into and out of the respiratory system. This life-sustaining process occurs constantly. If it were to stop, brain damage occurs in just a matter of minutes, yet we rarely think about it. Is breathing controlled by the lungs themselves or by other structures? Pulmonary ventilation occurs because gases move from areas of higher pressure to areas of lower pressure. When we inhale, the pressure inside our lungs decreases. Why? Because the primary muscles for inhalation, the diaphragm and external intercostal muscles, increase the volume of the thoracic cavity. The diaphragm, the dome-shaped muscle on the floor of the thoracic cavity, contracts and is forced downward. Meanwhile, the external intercostal muscles contract and pull the ribs up and outward. These two actions raise thoracic cavity volume, which in turn lowers thoracic cavity pressure. Air is pushed into the lungs by the higher atmospheric pressure. When you take in a deep breath, Accessory inhalation muscles such as the sternocleidomastoid, scalenes, pectoralis minor, and serratus anterior help elevate the rib cage further. When we exhale, the diaphragm and external intercostal muscles relax and the diaphragm and rib cage return to their original positions. This lowers thoracic cavity volume and raises thoracic cavity pressure. As this pressure rises, air is pushed out of the lungs. When exhaling forcefully, like when blowing out a candle, accessory expiratory muscles such as transversus thoracis, internal intercostals, and rectus abdominis also help. In summary, pulmonary ventilation occurs through skeletal muscle contraction and relaxation. That changes the volume and therefore the pressure inside the thoracic cavity. Inhalation happens when the diaphragm and external intercostal muscles contract to increase volume and decrease pressure inside the lungs. Exhalation occurs when these muscles relax, which decreases volume and increases pressure inside the lungs. Forced inhalation and exhalation employs a variety of accessory respiratory muscles. So what? Why is it important to understand pulmonary ventilation? Well, as you can see, this crucial process is a function of skeletal muscle contraction and relaxation. The lungs, attached to the wall of the thoracic cavity by the pleura, are entirely passive throughout this process. Anything that damages the motor neurons controlling skeletal muscles can interfere with breathing. Polio, short for poliomyelitis, is an infectious disease that can destroy motor neurons. If the polio virus damages the motor neurons controlling respiratory muscles, breathing becomes difficult or impossible, which is of course life-threatening. During the polio epidemics of the 1940s and 1950s in the United States, thousands of people, mostly children, suffered this type of paralysis and were unable to breathe on their own. Treatment involved placing the patient inside an iron lung. With the entire body encased in an airtight cylindrical drum with only the head outside, the iron lung used pumps to increase and decrease the pressure around the patient's chest, changing thoracic volume and enabling the person to breathe. Thankfully, polio vaccines have eradicated this scourge for most industrialized nations, but polio still occurs. People globally must be vaccinated against polio to ensure this disease does not return to the horrific levels of the last century. Unfortunately, Due to the unfounded and disproven belief that vaccines cause illnesses such as autism, more and more people are refusing to vaccinate. As a result, many vaccine-preventable diseases are returning along with polio, such as measles and mumps. 